Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. This is the beginning of chapter four of my special Christmas 2019, New Year's 2020 free class um, about gaining a deeper understanding of C++ by examining lambdas made up of videos that I have made throughout the last several years. So be sure to go back and watch chapters one, two, and three if you don't want any spoilers for anything here. We're going to start chapter four by going over the homework exercises from chapter three, actually the homework exercise. And this is where we left off. I had these two different examples here. I have this print list function and I have option one and I have option two. Now, as we saw at the end of the last episode, if I am compiling with option two, I am getting 1589 instructions generated. And if I'm compiling with option one, I'm getting the exact same output in both cases, just to be clear then I am getting 449 instructions executed. Now, presumably you played with this, and if I remove one parameter here, I'm going to see, let's see, I was at 449, I am now at 444. That was only five instructions different. But if I go to option two again, I'm at 1417 if I take away a parameter. Then I am at 1249. So I am saving about 170 instructions each time. And let's see, that was taking 4700 milliseconds on Compiler Explorer to compile, and I appreciate that this might be a little bit smaller than you can see on your screen, but that's about 4.7 seconds. Let's go back to option one, and let's see how long that takes to compile. Mm, four seconds here, so maybe that's not the best uh, example here. So were you able to figure out what was going on? Why we're seeing only five instructions different and more like 170 instructions different depending on which version we're using here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this back to one or two maybe different operations and see what we find. So that's 416. Um, that's 416 with option one, and if I go to option two, I expect them to be awfully similar now. All right, so option two is 474, so it's very, very close. Now if I take this down to exactly one, let's see where we land. 243 versus 243. Now they are exactly the same. So this is going to be very difficult indeed for us to try to walk through what the actual um, assembly is doing here. We can try to maybe take a guess. We can see this um, call. Here's main. Here's the call to puts being generated. But what we can know fundamentally if we take a moment and think about object lifetime and um, what lambdas are. Now, lambdas are unique things that are generated by the compiler. They have um, names generated by the compiler. And if we look at this version, we have a function. It is called print element. And we are calling said function n times, however many times it takes to do the variadic expansion here of this fold expression of this template parameter pack. If we look at option two, we have a lambda being defined inside the fold expression. Therefore, the compiler is forced to expand this lambda n times. So when we pass 
eight different versions here, like so, the compiler is actually having to generate eight lambdas. Now, they are eight lambdas that look exactly the same. They have a single templated parameter to their call operator overload, and they have a capture by reference of the single thing called C1, because C1 is the only thing that is used here. Um, so the compiler has to actually generate all eight lambdas, it has to instantiate their lifetimes, and then it has to decide if this is somehow something that it can optimize away. And it seems that it can't. Uh, neither GCC nor Clang will completely get rid of these. I believe it probably technically could by looking and seeing that each of them generate the same code and then they're not used outside of this context in any way. It, at the moment, neither of them can. Now, if we take it down to one parameter, we get the exact same assembly output generated in both cases because it is generating exactly one lambda in both cases. So in this case, we have eight lambdas, each called one time, and in this case, we have one lambda called eight times. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that this is a bad thing. Uh, it could be some weird use case where you actually want the code expanded n times and you need um, to get whatever that effectively unrolling of this uh, loop would give you versus calling the same function eight times. Um, and I think just for the sake of experimentation, we're on opt one here and we have this call to puts with eight calls to print list. So it has generated the function once and called it eight times. Let's go ahead and put this over on opt two. And I'm expecting to see eight calls to puts with all of the code generated for actually adding these strings together here with the colon. Let's try to reveal linked code. Okay, that's 228. Aha, there we go, 320. So we get 413, we get actually eight different functions generated, just like I said, and each one of them has its own call to puts and its own code for actually adding these together. Now this kind of falls under a uh, de-templatize your code best practice. Um, you probably want to avoid putting lambdas inside of fold expressions this way, but calling lambdas from fold expressions is almost uh, certainly a good idea, depending on what you need to do. Okay, so that was the answer to the question from chapter three. Now let's go ahead and get going with chapter four. So just for the record, there's nothing new for me to actually type out here. You kind of just have to watch this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. And we'll talk about chapter four. Chapter four, the evolution of lambdas. This one is considerably shorter with only four episodes to watch. Now, I do hope that you've gone and watched chapters one, two, and three. If you have not, then I strongly suggest that you go back and watch them. Otherwise, you can pick up the playlist um, to watch these episodes all in order. So if you're on the playlist right now, as soon as you're done with this episode, it'll automatically take you to these episodes in order, and then you can uh, come back here and do the exercise that will be after this. Episode 41, C++ 17's ConstExpert Lambda Support. This was a very key feature in making lambdas quite a bit usable, and it also uh, discusses a unique feature of C++ lambdas that are different than any other function type. Now, the next several are going to be about C++ 20. Episode 128, C++20's template syntax for lambdas. We can actually make explicit template parameters in C++20 style lambdas. This is, um, we've always been able to do implicit parameters using auto, 
function parameters as of C++14, C++20 is going to tweak that a little bit for us. Episode 149, C++20's Lambda usability changes. This is things like default constructability of captureless lambdas, which is going to affect the way that we use lambdas uh, in, in some places for sure. And then C++20's parameter packs and captures, episode 171 will be the final episode of chapter four. Um, and after you've watched those, come back here, and this exercise is going to be quite a bit uh, different than the ones that I've given you in the past. And this is simply, I want you to think about At this point, we have spent a lot of time with lambdas in this class, and I have done lots and lots of episodes about them. And as I've stated before, fully understanding lambdas means really understanding the language. So what feature would you like to see added to lambdas in C++23? I, um, I'm not going to have a specific answer for this question at the start of chapter five. You're just going to have to come up with your own answers here and then post them in the comments section of this video on YouTube so that we can all discuss what features we think would be interesting to see added to Lambdas in the future. So thank you for watching this chapter four of our class about Lambdas. Be sure to subscribe and come back next week for the fifth and final chapter.